Uh, we've got another conference game on a Friday night this week, and uh, playing on Friday nights is a little bit strange, but maybe we'll be better at it when we play two in a row. We're, we're playing a team that uh, does some unusual things compared to who we normally play. They, they are in the pistol formation, but they basically run triple option offense. They're fourth in the country in rushing. They really move the ball well and score points on everybody. Struggled a little bit on defense, but played really good on defense last week. They held the team they played to only nine points. So we're in for a dogfight on Friday night, and hopefully we'll play better than we did last week. You like going back to New Mexico? The parades and all the parties they throw you there today? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't. Uh, it, it's, uh, personally, it's a very hard week on me. But none of our players care, and none of their players care. And they're the most important people to the game. So it's no big deal. Do you take any comfort knowing that you're going against a team whose offensive weapons are mainly on the ground game, and your biggest defensive weapons are on the ground game? So does that give you any comfort going into it? No, not at all. I mean, it's, it's just like when you play wishbone teams. And it's getting worse because you're seeing so many spread football teams now. You get used to playing a certain way, and then all of a sudden you play a team that's going to – their linemen line up shoe to shoe. Uh, they read the end man on the line of scrimmage. He's never right. He takes the dive, and the quarterback keeps it. He takes the quarterback, and the dive keeps it. And it's stuff your players never see anymore growing up, and they never see it except once or twice a year in college. And that's only in our league because we have Air Force. And so the speed that they run it at is – is so much different than anything you can show them in practice. It takes them a long time to get used to it. Usually sometime in the second half they get used to it. But by then the other team usually has 30-some points on the board. What do you have to do defensively, Rocky, in against the triple option? What, you, know, you guys talk about you never see it and all of that, but then it doesn't always win games. Um, it doesn't always get 40 points. So. What has to happen against uh, it, a triple It gains a lot of yards. It keeps the ball away from the other team. And they do score a lot of points, most of them. Uh, you, hear the, you hear the commentators on TV say it's assignment football. Okay, it sort of is. It sort of is assignment football. One guy's got to tackle the dive guy. One's got to make the, tackle the quarterback. And one guy's got to run to the guy that's going to get the pitch. Okay, now that's easy, much easier said than done because they have five or six different blocking schemes, which means that five or six different people in your defensive scheme have to tackle the dive. And they have to read the blocking scheme exactly the same way that the offense is running it. So one, one uh, minute that guy's got the dive, the next minute he's got the quarterback. So there's, at the speed they run it at, obviously there's a m many, many mistakes made because of the speed and the different variations of the blocking schemes. They also, if, I, if you want to, we'll show you on the, on the board. I'll show you on the board. There's absolutely no way on the grease board or chalkboard, however you want to say it, there's no way to beat it. There's absolutely no way to beat it. They win every single time on the chalkboard. Okay, uh, and I've said that for years, and it's true. It's the best running offense ever designed. Uh, so what you have to do is have some kids that, uh, or their kids can't read it exactly right every single time, and you have to put some pressure on them so your kids can have a chance to slow it down. How close is it to what you ran when you were recording? It's extremely close. It's just out of a different formation than the wishbone. But it's exactly the same thing. Speaking of the option, though, you've, you've had some teams run the option against you. Not, not the triple option, obviously, but like North Carolina, Fresno State had someone when their backup quarterback came in. Do you feel like your team at least showed some discipline again on, during those situations? It, it's completely different. The spread option game's completely different than what we're talking about. Because their, their game hits the line of scrimmage a little bit faster. Their linemen are closer to each other. There's fewer gaps to. I mean, we, we try to take care of the spread option game by penetration, by blitzing and penetrating, so it screws up their timing. Uh, this they don't let you penetrate because they're big linemen or shoe-to-shoe. -shoe. There's no way to penetrate. So it, it's different. 
other than the ball's pitched and hopefully we run fast to get the guy with the pitch. So you're looking forward to this, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know if that, uh, it's always a challenge and uh, competitors like challenges. So I guess I do. I like I like the challenge of trying to design a scheme that gives our kids a chance to play well. Historically, do you feel like the three three five has been a more optimal defense against the triple option? Uh, no, not really, because uh, now we're back to their lineman being shoe to shoe. The 335 is based on stunning and slanting and blitzing where you penetrate the line of scrimmage. They don't let you plan- penetrate the line of scrimmage. So your, ki- your players have to do things they're not used to doing, which means they play two gap and they squeeze the linemen and, and our guys don't do that very often. How, Rocky, what do you think the ability is for Baden to take a fairly significant step this week, given that entire game experience that he had last week? I personally expect him to play much better. I mean, uh, he went through the game, and now he didn't play very well, but he went through the whole game. He didn't get hurt. Uh, He made a couple really good plays with his feet. He actually made a couple really good throws. Uh, so you would think that that will give him confidence going into this game, and the first game jitters are gone. So we expect him to play much better. Is there anything you as a coaching staff do differently with him this week, or is it just get more reps and more practice? I mean, we, we don't do anything differently with him. I mean, we'll, we'll change the game plan because of the defense. New Mexico runs a different defense than Fresno does. So the game plan will change, but it will be things that he does well and he's comfortable doing. What are some of the things that he said to you some of the things that he said coming out of this game that he felt he wanted to work on this week or wanted help with you guys coaching him up? You'll have to ask Coach Seip or Coach Toledo. All I did was pat him on the butt and say, hey, you'll be okay next week. <laughs> Coach, um, did Quinn start drawing yesterday during practice at all? He threw a little, a little bit. I think it was a total of 15 yards. Just but he threw several 15-yarders, if that's what you mean. But it's just pitch and catch, not like <laughs> Yeah, it's just pitch and catch, yeah. yeah. Do you, so any chance of him traveling at least this weekend? Uh, I mean, on Friday? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll decide tomorrow. If he can throw a little bit better tomorrow, we might take him. Rocky, have you heard from the Mountain West regarding your, your uh, concerns about particularly the, the punt penalty? I have heard from the Mountain West. And what did they say? They made a mistake, along with nine others. Nine others? Yes. Have you ever heard that number before from them? Not, not even close. Not when you send a number of clips in and, and a whole bunch of those clips, they said that it was the wrong call. So you sent in beyond the, the punt block? I, yeah, I, I don't. I, I think officials have a very difficult job, and I think they do a a pretty good job most of the time. And it's usually equal for both teams that are out there. This one was not. Those nine calls are they non calls also, not mm-hmm. just penalties mm-hmm. called? Mm-hmm. What was the breakdown? Oh, it doesn't matter. We got to move on. Frustrating though? I'm moving on to New Mexico. Coach Christian Hayward got his first sack last game. How would you evaluate his play so far? How has he come along since he hasn't played football in a while before the season? He still looks like he hasn't played football in a long time. I mean, he, he's getting a little bit better each week. But I, I think he's got a world of potential. I think he can be a dominant guy, and he's not even close to that yet. But the good thing is we got him for, I mean, uh, the good thing about our whole football team is there's a whole bunch of guys out there that are playing pretty well that are new to us or really, really young. And then you look at the veteran guys on our team that we counted on playing a whole lot and being big parts of our team, 
They're hurting, not playing. I mean, maybe our, our two best guys on defense and our best receiver on offense and now our quarterback. I mean, so, so what's happening is if we can stay competitive is the younger guys in our program are getting some experience. That means the future of the program is pretty, pretty rosy. You saw his tape coming out of high school. I mean, you saw potential there. Yeah, we, recruit, we recruited him. We thought we were going to get him. How close <laughs> or how far is he from what you think he can be? Oh, he's a long way from what he can be. I mean, he, he's rusty because he hadn't played football in a long time, and he's, he's still getting over an injury. He's not 100%. He's probably about 70%. I mean, he's not even close to 100% because of his knee. But he's able to play, and he's getting better every week. Do you see him as a tackle or a long term? I, I don't know. It, it depends. Uh, he can play both. In fact, we play him at both. Depends on who else you have. I think we have the best nose guard in the league. Alex Barrett's the best nose guard in the league. So as long as he can stay healthy, you wouldn't waste <laughs> Christian in there at nose guard. Coach, speaking of defensive lineman, uh, Dontrell, he's been playing with those two guys. Do you feel like that's affecting him in any way in terms of just like lining up and getting off the snap? And I don't like think that? it affects him any way until about the 25th play of the game, and then it hurts so bad he can't play anymore, so we have to limit his reps. And then it hurts all week, and he, it's funny how that works. I, uh, about uh, a day before the game, all of a sudden they feel better. Wearing it the rest of the year. Yeah, he has to. He oh. has to wear that the rest of the year. Yep. How's Eric Judge? Uh, not 100%. Uh, getting a little bit better each week. Uh, hurt himself in practice, what, two Thursdays ago? Hyperextended his knee. He didn't actually play in the game right after that. He played a little bit in this last game, not very many reps. Hopefully, he's better and he'll get more reps this week. Coach, before the season, you said Jake Feely might make a comeback by sort of the halfway point. How close is he to that? I don't know. I think, I think he's scheduled for another CT scan. I hope I'm saying the right thing on Friday. <laughs> Rocky, you said about last year that with the bad start last year that um, you guys didn't panic as a coaching staff. It's a veteran staff. Um, that kind of related to the players not panicking. Is this a situation where you would be concerned about the players panicking with kind of now a little bit of a hole that you're in as far as the, the, the I don't, I, I don't think we train them that way. I don't think our players will panic. If we don't win another game, they're not going to panic. And they'll play as hard as they can the last game of the year. That's the way we train them. That's the kind of kids they are. Uh, are they disappointed with the record? Sure, they're disappointed with the record. I don't, we got too good of kids, they won't panic. I mean, whether we win or lose, they'll play. I mean, you can't find another team plays as hard as we do. Were you impressed with your offensive line and your running game, even though DJ did not get 100 yards? It seemed to me that the 94 that he got were almost harder earned than a couple of games where he had 140, 150. I think that observation is correct. I thought uh, because of our lack of being able to uh, beat him with the deep ball, they got closer and closer and closer to the line of scrimmage as the game went along. Uh, and I thought our offensive line for the running game blocked very, very well because they were having at one or two of the guys would have to block one or two guys to get one yard because they have extra defenders up there. And I thought our running backs did a nice job of running hard. You know, if they didn't have those two safeties up there playing linebacker, some of those plays would have been 80 and 90 yarders, but they were four and five yarders. And when you put too many guys up there to block, when you can average four to five yards a carry, that's pretty darn good. That's a good job by the running backs, but a good job by the offensive line, too. And is it just to a point where, or not yet to the point where you trust, or offensively you trust Nick to change the play call if he sees the two or three safeties up on the line of scrimmage, nine, ten guys in the box? Yeah, he, he didn't have that option. Uh, but we started the game trying to get that option to the defense by throwing it deep the very first play of the game, throwing a screen the second play of the game. 
Uh, and they stayed back there for a little while. And then when he threw some balls that were 10 yards over their heads, all of a sudden they started creeping to the line of scrimmage, as most good defenses would. Some of those throws went pretty far out of bounds um, on those outs that went out. Were those intentional, you think? Early you on. mean some of the throws that went out of bounds? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? I think, I think one or two might have been intentional because they were covered well. I think yeah. the other ones were just bad throws. Okay. And speaking of Bowden, uh, it seems like Mexico is a team that likes to control the clock. Um, do you feel like you know, he's not going to have very many opportunities this week compared to others and he ought to really you know, take advantage of each and every drive? Well, because we like to run the ball and they're going to run the ball. I, I don't I, you'd have to look at the statistics. I think they've played five games. I don't think they've thrown 60 passes in five games or something like that. So they're going to run it, and obviously we're going to run it. So this will be old-time football. It'll be a short game instead of those two spread teams playing that you're out there for five hours and each team has, what was the Cal score? Cal Washington, 60 to 59 and 9,000 yards in offense. and. Uh, you didn't like that? <laughs> I think that, uh, I think that's basketball and grass. <laughs>